So before we get going, we got to talk about some pictures that I found when I was researching this mess. People in olden days were insane. This is Polish inventor, I ain't gonna say this word correct, Jan Sysipak. He invented the bulletproof vest in 1901. Here's the first successful test of the invention with a shot at his egregiously underpaid servant with a seven millimeter revolver at three paces. Just by the way, the term successful test implies that there were other unsuccessful tests. How fun is that to be his servant? This one looks like some stuff you would do to a little brother. He even made him ride his bicycle and lean it up against the wall. He's gotta get home before the street lights come on. But no, you're gonna put a bulletproof vest on him and give him one right in the chest to make sure it works. This is crazy. Hey, Theodore, come here and put this on. I don't think this is a very good idea. Shut up. I got a little brother. I ain't never shot him with a bulletproof vest. Might've shot him with a BB gun without the bulletproof vest. So I'm Angry Bill and this is Pre-Hospital Wisdom. We understand that medicine is medicine, but pre-hospital providers have special skills, knowledge, and culture that other providers don't have. Let's raise the bar here a little. Do me a quick favor before we really get rolling. Click the like button and subscribe. It helps more than you realize and I would definitely appreciate it. Let's talk about embarrassing behavior in my past today, but not as embarrassing as the people in those pictures. I spent the first half of my career wearing a bulletproof vest while at work. Most paramedics in my system did, and so I just kind of followed along. Plus, we're in the big city EMS department, and big cities are dangerous, right? But really, the vest made me look cool, made me look like a cop or something. I never had need of it. Wait, one time I did when I almost got my right nipple bit off while wrestling a dude on PCP. I wish I had the vest on at that moment, but it wasn't the best thing. The nipple biting incident was a culmination of a string of bad choices on my part. Improving my choices that night could have resulted in me not needing a vest and not almost getting my nipple bit off. Clean off. It's a dental proof vest, not a bulletproof vest. For those of you smart enough to forego bulletproof vests, let me tell you about them. They're hot. They cost a few hundred dollars. They're uncomfortable in that they ride up in front and cause your shirt to come untucked. They make you look 40 pounds fatter. They don't breathe at all. The torso sweat throughout your shift goes right into the vest and never leaves. After a week, my vest smells like an eighth grade gym locker did. And in eighth grade, that's a year I never took my gym clothes home. Of course, you can always expend a lot of effort and expense getting defunkifying sprays and cleaners. Or not worry about it. When I wrote this post on the old blog, I had been at that agency for about 15 years. In that time, we'd gone from about 70,000 calls a year to close to 100,000 calls a year. So some back of the envelope math says that I've been employed while my agency ran more than 1 million EMS calls. Do you know how many times I've heard of a medic being saved by the bulletproof vest? None. And none have occurred that I know of since I left. What troubles me about the vests is that they're an outward sign of inappropriate risk estimation. When one researches EMS injuries, one finds that EMS providers dodging gunfire at work is an exceptionally rare event, which is consistent with what I've seen in my time at EMS. The data show that the most common event that results in injury is bodily reaction and exertion. That classification includes lifting heavy stuff and performing repetitive micro tasks. Second is harmful exposures, not necessarily hazmat skills. This includes noisy environments and emotionally stressful events. The third is contact with objects and equipment like needle sticks and rough surfaces. Falls is fourth and transportation incidents comes in fifth. You have to go to sixth most common to find assaults and violent acts. Most of the 2100 assaults in 2011 were unchanged by wearing a vest or not. Violent acts actually include animal and insect attacks, face punching, finger biting, shoves, cutting, stabbings, and other non-ballistic torso injuries. You do a bulletproof vest isn't knife proof, right? So if we alter our behavior and equipment to match the risks inherent in our jobs, we should focus on lifting mechanics and moving in the back of an ambulance. I don't know about you, but standing in a hunched position in the back of the bus ends up hurting my low back. I do much better if I just sit on the bench or airway chair. Consider hearing protection when you have the siren on. Watch out when you're handling needles. Watch your step on icy or uneven ground. Wear safety goggles. Consider some kind of grip enhancing overshoes on icy days. Traffic accidents are pretty common for EMS providers. When I'm, dude, washing machine Charlie's flying over again and again. This is what happens when you live near an airport, I guess. Traffic accidents are pretty common for EMS providers. When was the last time you put a seatbelt on yourself in the back of an ambulance? Maybe not when you're moving around and getting equipment, I get that, but there are calls when your work is mostly done and you're typing a PCR chatting with the patient. Is your seatbelt on then? Do you wear a high visibility vest or uniform when working in roadways? 
Honestly, you're more likely to be run over working on the side of the road than you are to be shot in the torso. Don't talk to me about safety unless you are safe in these easier ways consistently. Those are the things we would do if we were actually concerned about safety. Until you're doing these simple things to improve your safety, I don't believe you when you say you just want to be safe. Deep down, you know the Kevlar vest is a fashion statement. I've been injured many times in my career. I have three or four needle sticks under my belt. I have a few falls where I had enough hang time to realize that having my feet over my head in midair was not going to work out well for me. Those hurt. I may have missed a few days of work here and there due to back pain after ill-advised lifts. Once I wedged myself with my feet on the floor and my head on the ceiling of the ambulance in order to have both hands to treat a patient. My partner hit a speed bump, my neck crunched and my arms went numb. I was so embarrassed I didn't even report that one. There was a nipple biting incident again, poor choices on my part. And once I got punched in the mouth by a girl wearing a big ass diamond ring, I donate a chunk of scalp on the goddamn oxygen Christmas tree in the ceiling almost every day. I've been in a bunch of wrecks, but I've gotten off lucky and never really been hurt in one. Most of those were due to my own decisions. Most of those were avoidable. And every single one of them didn't require a hot, sweaty, smelly, expensive Kevlar vest to save me. What I needed to do was slow down, watch my step, duck lower in the back of the ambulance, wait for more help when dealing with angry people wearing big ass rings and wear my seatbelt. We talk about being safety gurus, being safety conscious, about taking pride in how we manage unsafe scenes. But really, you needing a vest is you showing that you mismanaged that decision. You were somewhere you shouldn't be. Your job doesn't require you to approach cars that you pulled over. Your job doesn't require you to break up domestics. You are not a cop. So I don't wear the vest anymore but I do wear goggles, the reflective vest, and I put on my seatbelt in the back when I can. Let me know what you think of all this. If you found value from this video, click like and subscribe. If you think Kevlar is important to EMS, wait until you hear my anti-TEMS stance. One way or the other, one of the most helpful things you can do is share this content with someone you know. Click over here for another video or click over here on this side for the channel page and all videos. Subscribe's another button down here on the bottom. I appreciate it. I'm Angry Bill, this is Pre-Hospital Wisdom, and until next time, stay actually safe.